let's get started. So my name is Marek Olszewski, and today we're going to be talking about Shrubs, which is a new Zcash-style gas-efficient privacy protocol that you can implement as a smart company. And so this is a joint work with Cella Labs and Matter Labs, uh, with the following folks. Uh, Alexander Vlaso, Alex uh, Kupowski, uh, and Ron Tromer, Proby Gurkar, and myself. Cool, so let's begin. Uh, so first of all, why privacy? Why shrubs at all? Uh, and so maybe just as some uh, quick context. So Celo is essentially a mobile-first um, kind of fork of Ethereum. Uh, which uh, allows us to build kind of a user experience like this. And so it has a lot of focus on um, the light client um, side of things. And so we use snark based proofs to prove that a header is part of the chain. We have a stable coin that's backed in part by ETH, which is why it's relevant to the ETH community. Yeah, and then we have a way to send payments to phone numbers. So all of that means that if you want to send a payment to a friend, uh, say you want to pay someone back, for uh, coffee. Uh, you can find them in your contact list, uh, and since Cello lets you send payments to phone numbers in a decentralized way, uh, you can quickly uh, send, say, five um, Cello dollars to them. And since it's 2019, uh, of course, uh, you can also include an emoji. And, uh, and critically, you can pay for this transaction using the stable token itself. Uh, and so the whole experience is quite quick. Uh, it's fully decentralized. This is running a light client that syncs using that uh, ZK Snark based light client protocol. And so it allows you to recreate kind of a Venmo or a PayPal like experience um, that is fully permissionless and fully peer to peer. So that's Celo. And uh, given that it has this really big focus on um, sending things that are useful as a medium of exchange, sending stable value, uh, we hypothesize that privacy is actually. Uh, even more important uh, for uh, such a network than for coins that are primarily store of value coins. Uh, and so we spent a fair amount of time thinking about how we can add privacy to Celo. And again, Celo is a fork of Ethereum and it has an EVM, and so everything that we're going to talk about today is completely applicable to Ethereum. And so we had three goals. We wanted to um, make the balances of these transactions fully private. And since we didn't want linkability, we wanted to keep the recipient and sender addresses fully private as well. And, uh, and so this is, I think, uh, something that isn't that common today uh, in other Ethereum-based privacy solutions. And then finally, we wanted all of this to work really well on mobile. So again, it's mobile first, and so we wanted it to work nicely on mobile. And so to reach these goals, uh, we decided to look at Zcash and start porting Zcash into uh, a Solidity smart contract. Uh, and we quickly ran into a few issues. So number one, uh, the gas cost is perhaps not surprisingly quite high. Uh, and number two, uh, the mobile support is actually not that great. And so for this talk, I'm going to mostly focus on the former uh, and just kind of hint a little bit about you know, possible solutions uh, for the latter. So maybe just some super quick background on Zcash, um, just to get everyone on the same page. So in Zcash, there's a number of operations, one of which is this shielding operation. So that's when you take one public ZEC uh, and turn it into one private ZEC. So this is a shielding operation. And the way that you do that is you create a serial number, and then you sample some randomness from somewhere, uh, and then you can compute a commitment uh, to that serial number, uh, CM, uh, and then you create a public transaction that shares that commitment while spending one ZEC. And the miners will add that transaction, will take that ZEC, put it into a escrow pool that backs basically the private coins, and then adds this commitment to what's known uh, as a commitment market tree. And once that commitment is in the Merkle tree, then it exists, then that one ZEC exists in this in a private world of Zcash. Yeah, so here we go, we add that node to that. So next up, how do you then spend this private coin? 
Um, I think one of the easier things to understand is how do you turn it back into a public coin. So that's called de-shielding. And I should add that uh, for both this and the last example, we're talking about this kind of simplified construction that exists in the zero cash paper. It's actually a little more complicated than this, but um, just for the purposes of making it easy to understand, and then kind of focus on the simplified construction. But um, as we're kind of turning this back into a, a public ZEC, a uh, T address set, uh, you have to reveal uh, the serial number to your uh, commitment. So let's assume we're using this commitment over here. Uh, and then in zero knowledge, you have to prove that you know of some randomness, you know of R, such that this commitment, uh, CM, uh, appears in this uh, commitment repository. And the way you do that is you construct a uh, Merkle path that goes up to the root. Uh, and inside the snark circuit, you effectively prove uh, that this Merkle path uh, exists and is valid. And then other full nodes or miners would then uh, take this proof, uh, verify it, and they verify it by uh, giving to the proof the same Merkle root tree, which they themselves have. Uh, and if the proof verifies, then they uh, add the serial number uh, that you just revealed earlier to what's called a nullifier set, uh, so that you can't double spend that commitment again, uh, and then uh, gives you that one zen back from the escrow and a contract that basically backed all of the private points. And so if you wanted to then transact privately, uh, you're in effect doing the deshielding operation and the shielding operation back, back to back. Uh, so you first you know, prove that you have uh, one of these commitments, and then you create a new commitment, uh, usually tied to the recipient's address. Does that more or less make sense? So, why is this difficult to do in this smart contract? Um, you know, the answer is, uh, it's not difficult, but it is expensive. Um, so if you were to use a tree that's around 32 uh, levels high, um, then, and this is what Zcash uses today, Zero Cash recommends a bigger tree, but Zcash has been kind of steadily increasing their tree size uh, with every upgrade. Um, but if you were to have a tree of this height, uh, then you would require around 1.7 million gas just to make an insert operation uh, into this tree. So not even counting the kind of gas needed to verify the actual proof. Yeah, and this is assuming uh, you're using the MIMC hash function, which uh, we had to use in order to have um, efficient proving times on mobile devices. So if you use SHA-256, this would be cheaper, but it would just be um, very, very expensive to actually construct the proofs and construct the transactions on your phone. Uh, so we implemented MIMC uh, in a smart contract, uh, and uh, if you include that, then uh, it takes about 1.7 million gas to make these changes. And this is even with optimizations to the tree structure. So we spent a bit of time trying to make this quite efficient. So again, why is it expensive? Well, if you insert one of these leaf nodes, you have to uh, compute the hashes going all the way up to the root. Uh, so that you can update the, the latest work of a commitment. Um, and so that requires H hashes, and depending how you're storing the tree and how you're optimizing things, potentially up to H uh, storage updates, which uh, is pretty expensive. Uh, and then, of course, as you make the tree bigger, so you can support more total transactions, this becomes even more expensive. So how do we improve on this? Um, so we came up with what we were calling shrubs. And the basic idea is um, that we have a, a, a variant of a Merkle tree, which we're calling a Merkle shrub tree. And in this data structure, the tree is not defined by the root, but it's instead defined by the path to the rightmost non-empty node. So that means to the basically the frontier of this tree that we're filling from the left and going to the right. And um, as an optimization, instead of storing that entire path, uh, since uh, some of the nodes on the path may not have uh, children on their right side, uh, we can actually store fewer nodes than all H nodes. And so we only store the nodes needed to actually calculate 
this um, the the hashes that each of these nodes along this path. Uh, and we call uh, these nodes required to reconstruct this this path as uh, shrubs. And we call them that because if you include the path, it kind of looks a little bit like a shrub, not quite a tree. And uh, so what does a proof look like uh, using this new data structure? Um, so you basically have to construct a Merkle proof that doesn't end up at the root, but instead ends up uh, at this frontier path. So say that we want to prove that this node is part of the um, part of this uh, set. And then you construct a Merkle path that doesn't go all the way to the root, but it goes to this node, which is part of the frontier. Uh, and so to do that, you need this node, this node, and then you compute that, and then you can compute that and verify that it matches uh, what should be there. And then if you want to verify this proof, you need to know the frontier. Instead of knowing just the uh, Merkle root commitment, you need to know this whole frontier, or again, as optimization, the shrubs that you can use to generate that frontier. So let's look at another example. Say that you want to verify this guy. Uh, this guy, uh, if you go all the way up to the top, will intersect the frontier at the root. Uh, and that's fine. The root is part of the frontier as well. <coughs> so the algorithm works just as before. Uh, you just need a few more nodes as part of your root. And so in effect, what we're doing is we're trading off the amount of work that you have to do to perform these inserts uh, with the work that you have to do to verify these Merkle proofs. Uh, to verify a Merkle proof, you have to provide more uh, public inputs, uh, which makes the verification a little bit more expensive, but as we'll find out, the trade-off is actually well worth it. So, it all comes down to the cost of inserts. So, what does an insert now look like? Again, that was the expensive thing in a uh, traditional Merkle tree. Uh, say that we want to insert this node over here. So we just insert it into uh, the next slot uh, as we're incrementally building this tree from left to right. Uh, and then we have to compute all of the hashes and update all of the shrubs that are needed to construct this new um, uh, frontier that exists. And so if you look, these are the shrubs needed to construct the frontier before we added this node. Uh, and these are the ones that are needed to calculate the frontier uh, after we added the node. Um, and since the only new shrub is an actual leaf node that we have already added, uh, you actually only need one update and zero hashes to perform this insert. So that's pretty efficient, and that translates obviously into um, very good gas savings. Now, we're not always going to be so lucky. So it turns out that the actual amount of work that you have to do in this data structure uh, depends on where you're inserting into the tree. So let's imagine that we're inserting into the next uh, leaf. The, uh, these are the shrubs now needed to construct the frontier that I'm actually not showing. So the frontier would go to the right, probably, and then off to the left. Uh, and since we have to calculate uh, the value of this node, we need the next left child, and then <coughs> ultimately this leaf, since that's the only node contributing to that. And since we already had this in the previous shrub, uh, all we have to do is insert this node, which we're doing as part of the insertion. We have to update this, and to update this, we need to compute the hash of this uh, and the hash of this. And so that means that you're doing two updates and two hashes to insert this. And so um, in the expected case, you end up having to do about 1.5 updates. Uh, and about one hash um, on average. So obviously in the worst case, you may have to go all the way to the top of the tree, but what is I think interesting is in the expected case, this is actually quite the challenge. So what's the performance? <coughs> so we actually implemented this uh, in uh, a uh, solidity contract, and you can access it here if you're interested. Just github.com slash seller dash org slash uh, shrubs. Yes, question. So, so you leak uh, which, which subtree you're in? Uh, um, when you're doing like, does it verify, stuff? like, uh, no, you know, does you need to know whether you're going to go back to the previous picture? 
whether you're in the you know right subtree or in the left subtree or whatever. Uh, so the verifier um, only has to provide the public input to the uh, to the proof. The actual shrubs needed to construct the frontier, and then in zero knowledge, you actually do the proof that your node is connected to that frontier. So the verifier doesn't actually uh, isn't able to confer where the tree. Cool. So coming back to performance, we implemented a few variants of um, the different Merkle trees and benchmarked them for a tree height of uh, 32 uh, levels. Uh, and the basic implementation, not surprisingly, is slow, uh, requiring 1.8 uh, million gas for uh, every insert. It doesn't matter where in the tree you're inserting, you're always going to the root of the tree, and so it's always expensive. Then in the optimized case, um, we're able to shave a little bit of time uh, or gas. Uh, it ends up being around 1.7 million gas. And then in shrubs, in the worst case, it's still 1.7. Uh, but in the best case, it can be as low as 45,000 gas, which is quite incredible. And then in the mean case, on average, it's um, just under 100,000, which is still pretty good. Um, and so the next question is, okay, so if you were to use this data structure and if you were to implement Zcash, what would the actual cost of a transaction be uh, <coughs> entirely in solidity? Uh, and so we implemented um, the verification piece of that in Roth 16. Uh, and uh, we ended up with these numbers. So on average, the commitment uh, in certain is around 100,000. Uh, depending on how many inputs you have to your core operation, so you can have one or two inputs, uh, you're going to have to add one or two entries to the nullifier set, so this would take around 26,000 or twice that uh, to prevent double spends longer term. Uh, and then next you have to pre-process the, the public inputs. And so in this case, the public inputs are now these shrubs. So this actually costs more than before. Before you only had to put the, the Merkle root uh, as the public input. Um, but with uh, EIP 1108, this is uh, going to be a lot cheaper with the next hard fork. And so it's still pretty reasonable, around 300,000. And then finally, you have to do the actual verification, which requires around four pairing operations, I believe, uh, which adds another kind of roughly 200,000. <coughs> And so the total cost is around uh, 500,000, uh, depending on how many inputs you have again, which uh, is about 2x more expensive than Aztec, but you get no linkability. So all of your recipients and uh, sender addresses are now private. Now, we also looked at uh, what this would look like in Plonk. We didn't implement this like we did with Roth 16, but we did uh, do some estimates. And the reason Plonk is interesting is because the processing of the public inputs is a lot cheaper. Um, you don't have to do um, modular exponentiation, so uh, this is actually quite cheaper. Unfortunately, this ends up being a fair amount more expensive. So the overall price, the overall cost of the gas um, is higher, but uh, this is still potentially interesting because as you increase the height of the tree, you're going to have uh, less uh, gas added here versus here. Here, this is proportional to the height of the tree, and so you might end up paying quite, much, uh, quite a bit more as you increase the height of the tree. So, generally, uh, we're hopeful that with some optimizations, we can lower this and potentially um, get to a point where it's <coughs> even cheaper than using raw 16 with an even higher tree. And all of these things will be cheaper with the following. Cool. So I mentioned mobile. Um, what about it? Um, so the nice thing is by using MIMC, the proofing times are quite short, so that's quite elegant. Uh, so you can uh, construct these transactions in just a few seconds on a $200 phone. Um, but unfortunately, Zcash is not that like client friendly. So it's hard to know which transactions are for you since they are encrypted. You would have to try to decrypt every transaction in every block to find which transactions are actually coming to you. So that's uh, obviously hard to do as a like client. Um, and it's also hard to 
know what your hidden input should be to construct those Merkle proofs going up to the frontier. Um, a full node can figure this out pretty easily because they see every transaction. They can maintain the piece of the tree that they care about to construct those proofs. Um, but a like client, uh, you wouldn't want to actually query a full node to find those nodes uh, because that would reveal which of the commitments are their own. And so this is still kind of an unsolved problem. And so uh, one solution is to use operators uh, and to introduce the concept of a decryption key. A uh, decryption key would allow third parties to decrypt all transactions that are for you uh, without having to, giving them the ability to actually view the transactions to see the balances and the senders. Um, and so we're looking into actually doing that. Uh, so that with just a limited amount of trust, you can have a full node help you uh, do these things. And so that's it. Just want to thank you for your time and yeah, answer any questions. Yeah. Just, just to confirm, do you think that the size of the proof is variable depending on which name we have? Yeah, so the size of the, the amount of gas that you have to pay, not the size of the proof, but the amount of gas that you have to pay will be different depending on where you are in that commitment tree. And so one way of actually making this a little bit more uniform is to use a gas token so that everyone contributes more or less the same amount of gas. And if you happen to be unlucky and you have to go all the way to the root, uh, then um, you can lean on that gas token more than other groups. But is the question about the size of the proof? So it's not about the size of the proof, it's more about the, the, uh, the size of the matter proof, so the number of steps you need to have, to do to have the proof. And for you, and there is a variable aspect in the metric itself. You always pass the fixed edge. Yeah. So if you pass what the height of the tree to this side. Yeah, we can chat more offline. Thanks. Yeah? This is, or does this have any differences to your two or is that? Um, I believe right. so, but I'm not the right person to ask. So let's chat more. It, it's, it's slightly different. It, it, it was inspired by the mountain ranges, but it's a uh, slightly different concept, uh, concept where you always have a fixed size commitment. So in minimum. Or so at least So in a Merkle tree, and Merkle tree is a cryptographic accumulator, which gives you a constant size commitment to a vector of values. Right? And this commitment is the root of the tree. With shrubs, it's also a cryptographic accumulator with a, fit, with, with, a, with, a, with a commitment size proportional to this height of the tree. And it's determined by the edge of the, um, of the tree, like of um, the entire edge with, with which you have the root. Then you have the next element on the right, you next element. root for every complete subtree. Yes. And this and edge is your commitment, uh, and you have to pass this commitment, so like all the uh, items on the edge, to this arc. But since we have a tree of a fixed size, we, we just pick a size of like 2 to the power of 32, uh, the size of the commitment will be also fixed, which is just logarithm of this, which is 32, which, which we, can, we, we can pass as inputs uh, to the Snark, or we, we can also optimize to just compress them in a, in a hash. Okay. Thanks, guys. I think that's time, but we'll be outside if you have any more questions.